I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. This is episode 340 of the Brilliant Balance podcast, Beyond the Buzz, Why Busy Women Need Quiet Time to Think. So if your life looks anything like mine, and if you're a listener of this podcast, it just might, (laughs) things can get a little buzzy without even meaning to, without even trying very hard, without even lifting a finger. I think life in this chapter has a lot of buzz. And what I mean by that is just there are a lot of moving parts, right? We have a lot of things on our plate, a lot of plates spinning, whatever metaphor you want. This is a chapter where there are a lot of things happening around us or within us or that we're causing to happen kind of all the time. And because of that, there can be a lot of noise. I always, as soon as I say that, I always think about the Grinch, you know, covering his ears saying the noise, 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 noise. It's just, there's so much input coming at us. And when we have a lot of noise and a lot of input and we don't create time to think, or we don't have a lot of time to think, a couple of things can happen that really trip us up and get in our way. And that's sort of the basis for today's episode is I want to talk about, I want to make a case for why women whose lives are busy, who have a lot of things going on simultaneously, not just deserve time to think, but literally require it. Like why it is an imperative that we find that time to think. And the first thing I want to talk about here is that when we have a lot of noise and a lot of input and a lot of stimulus and a lot coming at us, we can end up in one of two states as a means to sort of cope with the overwhelm, right? We can shut down completely and go into almost paralysis, right, where we just do nothing. And this is what you get when you're maybe tempted to start a Netflix marathon or you find yourself just kind of rearranging the things on your desk or on your desktop, right, on your computer without actually doing anything. Or you find yourself wanting to go putter, right, like in the backyard or in the kitchen, and you're just kind of doing nothing. You're literally paralyzed from taking any kind of action. That is a predictable and kind of frequent outcome from this state of affairs. The second thing that we can end up doing when we have a lot coming at us, is we can go into frantic action, right? We're kind of this frenetic bumblebee, just doing whatever is in front of us, and we're staying in perpetual motion, and we're buzzing around, just taking care of business. And I think that is the second very prevalent state that we find ourselves in, right? If we're not paralyzed, we're kind of this bumblebee flying around taking action, But there's some danger of the kind of action that comes when we're in that frantic state. I think of it as like when we're doing without thinking, when we're just staying in perpetual motion frantically, first, we could take the wrong action, right? We can just not have paused long enough to ask ourselves, what should I actually be doing here? Doing something feels better than doing nothing, and we're at risk of taking the wrong action, which potentially creates rework, right? It potentially moves us off track or perpetuates a problem that we're already in. So the wrong action is a danger. Second thing we could do is we could be taking an inefficient approach, right? When we just kind of jump in with both feet and splash around and try to do it, our approach for doing the work can be inefficient. There hasn't really been forethought to plan, how might I do this? Do I really need to do this? Is this the best way to do this, right? We're just kind of splashing around. So it can be inefficient. Best metaphor I can give you for this is if you go to the grocery store without a list, you know how you're kind of moving back and forth? Like if somebody mapped you on GPS inside the store, you're zigzagging back and forth, right? End to end of that store and through the aisles. Up, oh, whoops, forgot I need this thing that's in the canned goods aisle. Up, oh, now I got to go to the dairy. Up, oh, I forgot this thing by the bakery. Up, oh, I have to go to produce. You know, you're kind of all over the place. And I think that's a, a the visual I get around an inefficient approach to our actions. 
And the third thing that can happen is we can take the right actions, but in the wrong order, right? We can get all the things done, but when we're doing those, we may in fact be doing the right things in the wrong order. We're kind of out of sequence. And doing things out of sequence means it's not optimized. There's a better way that we could have taken those steps and we never really sat down to think about what that might look like, so we never found it. Okay, so I think those are the three risks. When we're doing without thinking, we can be taking the wrong action altogether. We can take an inefficient approach where we're backtracking a lot, right? Or we can take the right actions in the wrong order, which gives us suboptimal results. And really the antidote to all of this is so simple. It's right it's right under our noses, but it doesn't feel very easy to get to. And that is to take time to think, to actually pull out of this frenzy of doing and give ourselves an opportunity, ideally a quiet opportunity, where we can kind of gather ourselves. And there are lots of different ways to articulate what I mean by thinking. Lots of different verbs that came up for me when I was putting this episode together. You know, you might need time to reflect, sort of look back at what's happened and extract some kind of meaning or pattern from that reflection. You know, you might need to ponder some options and really just float around a little bit without the intention of making a decision, being more expansive in your thinking about what's possible. You might need to plan like to actually sequence a series of steps and get them in order and move them around a bit until they feel like they've landed in the best possible pathway. Um, You might need to make a decision. And decisions actually, contrary to popular belief, we don't just let time pass and then the decision comes to us. Like There often is a process that we can follow to help us evaluate options before we make a decision. That requires thinking time right? We might need to shift the way we think about something. I think of this as a perspective shift most often, but sometimes the narrative that we are stuck in is not very helpful. And if we can shift our perspective and find a different narrative, sometimes there's freedom in there and we'll find a better way forward. Sometimes thinking could be to improve something, right? We think about is this good enough? Is this process working? Do I like the outcome I'm getting? Is the re- is it helping the relationship? But we might look at, is there some area that we can improve or adapt, right? Even if it's not like a objective improvement, there might be an adaptation that we need to make that will never occur to us if we don't give it a little thought. We might need to be ready to enroll or engage someone else and we're if we don't have time to think we don't even we haven't even thought about that so we're kind of rolling solo when if we could enroll or engage other people we might be able to get support that's always a good thing right we might need to make an idea bigger like all of these are just verbs that kind of stream of consciousness came to mind for me when i started thinking about <laughs> thinking about thinking right why do we need time to think and it was reflect and ponder and plan and decide and shift and improve and adapt and enroll and engage and augment, like all those things I just walked you through, they're all under this kind of master label of thinking. And it's something that we're not doing enough of, right? We're just not giving ourselves the benefit. It's like we say, I don't have time to think. And because of that, we're really focused on doing. And I think that it's hurting us, okay? So when you know that you need time to think when you've agreed to the premise here that having time to think, especially quiet time to think, would be beneficial. I want to walk through three things that you can do. Like, how do you think, right? What does the actual process look like? First thing we have to do is slow down or shut down altogether the input that's coming at us. When I really think about the root cause of this, I did an episode not long ago on being more intentional about your information diet. What are you consuming? The twist on that for this is we may need to just reduce it overall for a while, right? In order for us to think and to and to really work with what we've already taken in, we need to slow down or shut down the input train. <laughs> and the input train is coming at us pretty fast these days, right? Some of us are getting most of our input from social media, right? From new channels. If we just take the word social out, these are new media channels. We are consuming information through Instagram, 
through LinkedIn, through Facebook, sometimes. I think it's less so than it used to be. Through threads or Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it, if you're still using those channels. And I think there's kind of vacillating interest and TikTok, right? These channels of new media are where we are getting a lot of our information. And it is like a fire hose turned to maximum volume. It is just coming at us in torrents of information that's so hard to keep up with. Add to that the email newsletters, the email that we're getting through work and our personal lives, Slack channels, Asana and other, you know, Monday.com collaboration hubs. Like we have so much input. Slowing it down or shutting it off altogether for a hot minute so that you can think is really, really powerful. And it is the first step. And most of us think, I can't, right? I can't because if I close the gate, there's going to be a flood outside that door. And as soon as I open it again, I'm going to get completely overwhelmed. Possible, right? Possible. But I think the power of having that pause is still worth it. The power of temporarily slowing down or shutting down the input. Think about the last time you were on an airplane. And if you didn't have Wi-Fi on the airplane, what did that feel like? I love that feeling because I think it puts you into a vacuum temporarily where no new information can get in. It's like you can deal with the information that's already come through the gate. No new information can get in for a minute. And putting yourself in an offline environment to slow down or shut down the input is very powerful. Okay. There are lots of ways to do this. You know, I I think. Being on an airplane is one where it sometimes happens organically, but we're going to talk in a minute about some of my favorite ways to create this thinking time if it's not being created for you. All right, so slow down or shut down the input. Hi, it's Cheryl Ann. Thanks for listening. Did you know that the ideas I share on this show are things I also can help you implement? If you want me in your corner helping you find more time for what fills you up, Go to brilliant-balance.com forward slash schedule and sign up for a free exploratory call. Give yourself this time. You'll be so glad you did. Second thing, second piece of the step of the process is proactive processing. Proactive processing. This is where either verbally or in writing, you're going to sort through all of the stuff that has been swirling around in your head. So verbal processing, if you're a verbal processor and that is how you think, then this is like thinking out loud, right? You may have someone that you're going to sit down with and talk to. That could be a colleague, a family member, somebody that you pay to do that with you. But you are going to go back and forth and kind of process through your thoughts by verbalizing them. Time-consuming. That is time-consuming, and it requires a partner in most cases. Now, some of us have tested this idea. Inside of coaching, we've tested verbal processing with yourself. Like You could turn on a Zoom call with yourself and kind of watch yourself have the conversation. Some people are like going for walks and opening up a voice memo and speaking while they're out on that walk. Like You just look like you're talking to yourself or you look like you're on your phone. And they might put AirPods in and they're speaking into a voice memo as a way of verbal processing. Some of us are in like Marco Polo groups, which is a little app that you can voice text. Voxer allows you to voice text back and forth. So verbal processing is where the words are coming out of your mouth as a way to dance with the ideas. And finding a way that you can have that regularly if you know you're a verbal processor, super important. Okay? It actually counts as thinking. Second way to do it is through writing. And so writing is where you're kind of thinking on paper, right? If if verbal processing is thinking out loud, written processing is thinking on paper. Um, And I, you know, I'm not being really prescriptive here. It could be literal paper with a journal. It could be a digital experience where you're, you know, you open up a notes app or you open up a Word document and you're, you're getting your thoughts out. But being able to kind of dump your thoughts into a document again, either handwritten or digitally typed, is a way of having a record of what you have shared. So I actually, sidebar, I love how the AI tools are starting to help us. Those of us who are verbal processors have a record of what we've said. It used to be difficult. Now it is very easy to get a transcript or a summary, 
of what you have shared. So if you are like, I just need to talk at this computer for a half an hour, and then I need a summary of it, I mean, Zoom will do that for you, right? You can get a transcript of your spoken words very, very easily today. And that is new, and I actually think very powerful for those of us who are more verbal. So second step of the process when you're getting time to think is proactive processing. Shut down the input and start working with what's already in there right? What are the thoughts swirling around in my head? And then back to all those verbs I shared. Do I have a decision I need to make? Do I have a perspective I need to shift? Do I have someone I need to enroll or engage in this idea so that they can help me with it? Do I need to optimize or improve something that's not working quite right in my life? Like, Which of those verbs is kind of the thrust of the processing that you're doing? And then the third step, so that you can complete the loop and not just feel like that was a colossal waste of time, is synthesize and strategize. Synthesize and strategize. So we're going to slow down or shut down the input altogether so that we can go into proactive processing, and then we're going to synthesize and strategize what we just processed. So this is sort of the now what piece of things. This is where we're going to translate into action what we have just thought about. And that is going to be a better action. It's going to be more efficient, more sequenced, more intentional than if we were taking frantic action, right? This is thoughtful action. This is action that comes at the end of one of these sessions where we're like, all right, I know what I'm going to go do or try or communicate. So how you go through this process is frequent. I frequently cycle through this process. Sometimes it's a short session. Like, I just need time to think. And I'm going to go sit with a journal or a notes app and kind of get my thoughts together. Sometimes it's, I need a conversation with someone. I need to talk this out. And I'm going to use somebody on my team or in my family or my personal life to just talk through it. And at the end of it, best case scenario, it's moving me to action. That synthesize and strategize part says, okay, now I know what I'm going to go do. So how do you do this? Where do you enable this? If your life is so buzzy right? And there's so many plates you're spinning and so many things coming at you. Here are some of my favorites. I'm in this life stage. Um, This is what I do personally when I'm trying to get that time. One is to go hide out, right? Just hide out. This can be in your own home. You just want to be in a place where you intentionally make yourself less accessible. So I absolutely love, as the weather gets warmer, being on my back patio We have a sunroom kind of off the patio. I love to hang out in there where I'm just a little bit removed from the flow of the household. Sometimes I'm closing the door to my office and saying, I'm just going to hide out in here for a minute. Sometimes I'm uh, in the basement, like in a part of the house that people are not in if I need to process. So you can, you don't even have to leave home to get time to think. Sometimes you can just hide out somewhere inside of your existing home. Okay. You also can use your car. And I love, there's memes that circulate about this. And I think it's funny because it's true, right? Some of us are sitting in our cars in our own driveway. Like we're home, but we haven't yet gone inside because there's a little bit of time there that we can eke out, especially if you have young kids or a lot going on at home. You might use car time to call somebody and verbally process something. You might park your car at a kid's activity, but not go inside right? And use the time in your car. If you have a long car trip that you need to get somewhere and you're alone in the car, I think it's great for some of this true silent thinking time. And if you have a partner in that car that is a good listening partner, or you can call a good listening partner, long drives are great time for processing. You you don't have access to as easily as a way to have a record of it, But if you can, if it's something that you know you're going to need to talk through for a while, and then at the end of it, you can do the synthesize and strategize step separately, I think that can be very effective. So car time is great. Um, Another one that I think we all can use is the walk and talk. So this is where you are going for a walk and processing as you're walking. So anybody who's ever walked with a girlfriend knows this is true, right? You can solve the world's problems on a good hour-long walk. So being able to have a two-for-one where you're getting a little bit of movement, movement actually enables processing. Like There's science behind that, that as you are moving, your thinking can become more clear. So I love a walk and talk. I use them all the time. And then the getaway. 
the ability to actually step out of your day-to-day life for a day, two days, three days, a week, whatever you can swing, and be in a different environment, like changing up your environment of what does it look like and feel like. Ideally with that on-ramp and off-ramp called a long drive or a flight. And so much processing can happen during that level of quiet time where you're out of the day-to-day flow, okay? So inside of my company and the communities that we run, we are taking people on retreats. This is one of the purposes for that. It is great for me. It's great for them. We step out of our day-to-day life. We get on a plane. We go to a place with a complete change of scenery, and there is time to process. Decisions get made, right? We change the way we think about things. Perspective shifts when we are in those kind of environments. So I love it when I know that I'm going to like get a Starbucks and get on a plane, turn off all the input from the outside world, and really have some thinking time that I can be away from people who need me, away from a business that needs me, and just be able to come back with like new ideas or better ideas. So if this is something that you you know you're in this stage of life, you know that life is buzzy, there's a lot happening, there's a lot needed of you, and you feel like, I just don't have time to think. Again, my goal today was to make the case that not only do you deserve it, but you fundamentally require it in order to make the kinds of decisions that are being asked of you day after day. You do not need to go buy a cabin in the woods and go full Henry David Thoreau to make this work. Right, You can find it in small doses, hiding out within your own home, kind of using time that you're in the car locally, or doing a short getaway. I think you know, in addition to the walk and talk, those ideas really do work and they will, they'll kind of build familiarity for you with this. You'll start to see the results so that it'll give you courage to do it in bigger and bigger ways. And I'll just end by recapping those three steps of the process. We want to slow down or shut down the input coming at us. So we can go into proactive processing, either verbally or through writing, and then ultimately synthesize and strategize so we know what we're doing next once we've come out of the session. Take that with you today. Do something brilliant with it because I know that you will. And if you got something out of today's episode and you're willing to share it with a friend, it means so much to me when you take an extra minute to do that. Just hit that forward button, get this into the hands of someone else who you know will benefit. Someone else who is in this very buzzy chapter of life, always trying to do the next right thing and share this process with her to see if it will be helpful to her as well. Thanks for listening today. Till next time, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com. Thank you.